What can I say? Is Hao Long Gu never going to stop surprising us? We've had a dearth of non theropods until Hao Long Gu came along. We had smaller ones, but they shocked us with the 1 to 35 Apatosaurus. And now along comes another sauropod, much to my delight as a sauropod lover, and to my anguish as I watch my bank account dwindle. But being not just a sauropod, but a rep from my favourite group, the Titanosaurs, I had no choice. The name Ampelosaurus means vineyard lizard, from the Greek Ampelos, meaning vine, named after the Blanquette de Limoux vineyard near where it was found. It's a pretty small titanosaur with an estimated length of 14 meters, 46 feet. Accounting for the curve, I estimate the length to be 42 centimeters or 16.5 inches, making this about 1 to 33 scale. So here's the Wonder Artistic Models 1 to 30 humanoid and the 1 to 35 to try to bracket the scale. This model comes in two variants, there's the black and the green. Now I really like the black because it looks badass, but unfortunately I'm seriously out of space and I could afford only one. And it had to be this green one, which is a favourite colour of mine because of its relative rarity and the nostalgia for the colours of yesteryear. And holy shit, I gotta tell you, the colours don't disappoint. From the fiery orange here, see how beautifully it blends into the green. I can hardly tell where one colour ends and the other begins. Then in the tail tip, Haolonggu brings back its distinguishing accent. There are stripes dorsally all the way down. And notice how the white component of these double stripes actually go all the way up the animal, tying everything nicely together. Very well thought out. Then here there's a different theme in terms of these splotches going down the sides and the limbs. So let's take a closer look. Now as we know, most sauropods don't preserve their skulls well. The lucky few we do have have been used as references for many similar or believed similar relatives. In the case of Ampelosaurus, however, there's some promise. As far back as 2001, a quite complete skeleton was found, nicknamed Eva, after the student who discovered it. It seems to have included an almost complete skull, yet surprisingly, for over 20 years, no one has bothered to describe it. Now we do have this, in an exhibit suggesting how Eva might have looked like. And going on this, you can see that our Haolongku already differs, most obviously in the dorsal concavity versus the convexity you see in the photo. It might very well be that the final restoration will render our model inaccurate, but rather than wait around for another 20 years, I'm just going to enjoy this. And truly on its own, you can already admire the sculpted detail. Look at the different textures in the head, the lips. I don't know what it is, there's always something a bit cartoony in the way Haolongku paints its eyes. A pretty much a generic head and nothing to write home about, but still rendered very nicely indeed. Then going down here, just look at the detail. Haolongku has continued to refine its scale detail. If you look at their Dicreosaurus, that was already pretty good. But then on the Ampelosaurus, the fineness just blows it away. 
I would have said that the texture is as good as you'd expect from Haolonggu, but that would be insulting and not giving them due credit. And what you have is an over-textured and feels appropriate for the large size of the animal. And you see some of these osteoderms, and I like how they're the same colour as the skin, in the true subcutaneous sense of the word. And here on top, we start to see beginnings of the osteoderms we think of when we think of Ampelosaurus. Dorsally, you can appreciate how they gradually increase in size into the thoracic area. Before reducing again at the end. You can see how each feature follows the colour scheme of the surrounding region, but not just a lazy paint over wash, but actually infused with colour fades as well. You can see each spike here is individually textured as well, but very subtly. And being a titanosaur, and especially Ampelosaurus, you expect plenty of osteoderms and scutes. Dizzying array of spikes, scutes, and plates are a paleo artist's dream. And I've seen some fantastic pieces of art showcasing the armor. And here, if I can sneak in, just a quick word on osteoderms. Titanosaur osteoderms used to be categorized into many types before being simplified a lot by Vidal et al. in 2014 into ossicles, barb and root, and scutes. And just to be clear, this is what I'm talking about here, with a barb that's externally expressed on the animal, and a root that you can't see, and then the cingulum, this slight protuberance here. They propose that the asymmetrical barb and root type may have been arranged parasagittally. They base this on the orientation of the nutrient foramina on the inside. Also, other rostioderms previously classified as ellipsoid, cylinders, scutes and so on may well be part of a root and bulb that have broken off. We know that despite images of armoured sauropods like Saltosaurus, the actual ratio of found osteoderms to body size is very low, casting doubt on its purpose as armour and hinting towards other directions, such as mineral storage. And recent reconstructions have practiced more moderation, as you see in this picture by Rick Raptor at DeviantArt. Two parasagittal rows of osteoderms and that's it. I guess you could argue that in these two rows of spikes, you have a parasagittal arrangement of sorts. The rest is filled in according to artistic license. And really, unless you somehow found an in-situ specimen, it would be impossible to ever know for sure. So I'm just going to enjoy this and not worry too much about it. And continuing, we see more textures, and of course, that really beautiful paint job. Again, I really sound like a broken record, but just see how intricate these scales are. Now the arms. I like how they didn't include a thumb claw, which is correct for more derived titanosaurs. As I explained in the science part of my review of Ademar's Patagotitan.
Look at these skin creases between the thigh and the belly. And notice how each fold bears very small scales. The detail is just exquisite. And then the legs. And on the plantar surface, the detail on the feet here. In the tail, there's that pleasing double band of colour. Now I love bands in long tails and necks, and now we have double. And they're blended so beautifully. And again, the fade and the background colour from top to bottom. Utterly beautiful. And I really like how the white goes up and ties the whole scheme together. Again, just really loving the coloration. And now the underside. Again, comparing it to the Dicreosaurus. Now I'm used to seeing belly scales done rather nicely, but in larger sizes. And this is just absolutely beautiful work. Comparison time! Alright, first of all, I want to show you how far we've come. This is the first Ampelosaurus I have, the Collecte from 2011. I still really like this. The texture is so pleasing to look at. But of course, for the size and price point, the Haolongku is on a different level. Now I want to show you something that's really precious to me. This is the Cesar Gomez Ampelosaurus, and I can't sing its praises enough. You still can never compare to an original sculpt and paint by an artist, and Cesar's work is a total killer. However, if you can't find it anymore, you know that Haolongku truly offers something out of this world for the low price it sells bees for. Now moving to something more of us will have. We have to look at the previous Haolongku sauropod, the Apatosaurus. Now 
And I believe looking back, we'll see that here is where Haorongu ushered in a new era of sauropod models. Then the other Haorongu sauropod, Dicreosaurus, back when they were in partnership with GR Toys. I already showed you some of the improvements made since then, but this was already a very good model in its time. And you might like to see it against the PNSO Lingulong, which was the last and only 1 to 35 scale sauropod I believe that PNSO has ever made. And for something else many of you may have, here's the 1 to 35 W Dragon Giraffe Titan. And finally, our usual size comparators, the PNSO Wilson T-Rex and the PNSO Cameron T-Rex. So that's it for the Harunku Ampelosaurus. As you can tell, I can't say enough good things about it. Harunku has really delighted us this year with its comeback. And it's not just a comeback by a trickle, but in waves. And the amazing thing is how these fast releases still keep up the quality of sculpt and paint, and in fact improve on them, while retaining a relatively low price. Now I don't know the people behind Haorongku, but whoever you are, you have my respect. Good job, guys. Okay, that's it for now. I'll see you in the next video.